Pastors, theology students, congregation members, and everyone from around the world attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. I am Han Hegun from Saul James Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I'll be your host today. The ongoing Shincheonji Online Seminar clearly and logically testifies to God's purpose and order of His work through its testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. I hope you'll have a time of fully perceiving God's purpose and receiving His grace through the testimony shared with you today. First, let us offer up a prayer to God with a united heart. Our Holy Father, God, who is the source of eternal life, we sincerely thank you for uniting us as one in your word through this precious time you allowed us to have. As your word is being testified to the whole world today, Please be in everyone's heart for them to hear and perceive so we can all become one in you and your word and let it be a time filled with hope and grace. We pray all these things with firm faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of today's seminar is Lesson 23, Elementary Teachings and the Place of Maturity. I hope everyone will have a precious time to perceive the level of today's elementary teachings and where the place of maturity is, and also understand the blessings given to us to carry out our life of faith at the place of maturity. Now, let us welcome up Instructor Kim Woo-hee from Uijang Church of Seoul James Tribe. Greetings to all pastors, seminarians, and believers throughout the world who have their hope in heaven and eternal life. I am Kim Woo-hee, the head of the Uijang Church of the Seoul James Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. We sincerely welcome you to the testimony of the revealed word of the Old and New Testaments by chapter of the Shincheonji Online Seminar. The title of today's lesson is titled Intermediate Lesson 23, Elementary Teachings and the Place of Maturity. And the references are taken from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, and Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. As you listen to the lecture today, I hope you will have a precious time to understand the will and purpose of God by thinking about the words written by Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago and reflect upon what those words have to do with me, as well as finding out what the elementary teachings versus the place of maturity where perfect teachings are. First, let's read Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to verse 14. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who, by constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. In verse 12, the reference to timing about though by this time is referring to the time frame of carrying out a life of faith for a long time. Thus, they should be teachers by now, however, it is written that they need to be taught the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. These people are told they need milk, not solid food. What is the title of today's lecture again? It is referring to the place of elementary teachings versus the place of maturity. 
According to the Bible, what is considered the way? In John 1 verse 1, it is written, In the beginning was a word, and that the word was God, and this word is also considered the way. The elementary teachings of the word is the elementary teachings of the way. Just as in the world there are elementary schools where children attend and there are universities where the mature attend, even in the world of faith, there is a way of elementary teachings and there is a way of mature perfection. In the reference verses, it is written that elementary teachings are like milk that the infants drink and the mature perfect teachings, that is, the teaching of righteousness, is like solid food. Then let's find out what the elementary teachings and the mature perfect teachings are and from whom we must receive these teachings. Verses 13 and 14 says that anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness, while solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Just as in the world, children and mature adults eat different foods, even in the world of faith, those who listen to the words of elementary teachings that are like milk are like spiritual children. And those who hear the teachings of righteousness, that is like solid food, are the spiritually mature who can distinguish between good and evil. If today is considered to be the time of the Lord's second coming, when the book of Revelation is being fulfilled, what is considered elementary teachings of the way and what is considered to be the place of maturity? I will explain the answer first. The elementary teachings at the time of the second coming is a word from the time of Adam to the time of Revelation's fulfillment and the mature teachings of perfection is a reality to the fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation. Because this is so important, let me explain this again. The elementary teachings at the time of the Second Coming is a word from the time of Adam to the time of Revelation's fulfillment. And the mature teachings of perfection is a reality to the fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation. Why is it that the reality to the fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation is a place of maturity? Why is it the mature teachings of perfection? It's because Revelation is a new covenant that we must keep and the promises that must fulfill. In John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus said that it is finished. And he fulfilled all of the Old Testament. And in the new covenant Revelation, it is written, it is finished in Revelation 21, 6. What is promised in Revelation? It is God's purpose and will. Thus, the words of reality to the prophecies of Revelation that makes known God's purpose and will is the mature perfect teachings, that is, the way of maturity. So, let's summarize. The reason why the reality to the fulfilled prophecies of Revelation become the way of perfection. The history of the Bible went from the world of Adam to the world of Noah, from the world of Noah to the world of Moses, from the world of Moses to the world of Jesus' first coming, and from the world of Jesus' first coming to the world of Jesus' second coming, that is, the world of the fulfillment of Revelation. During the worlds of Adam, Noah, Moses, and Jesus' first coming within every era, there were promises made with God and the chosen people and commandments that must have been kept. However, in every era, the chosen people of God whom God made a covenant with did not keep His promises and instead became corrupt which is why the previous era came to an end and a new era was recreated. Therefore, before the fulfillment of Revelation, the previous eras did not carry out a perfect life of faith, 
which is why the second coming of Christ and the prophecies and fulfillment of Revelation had to exist. Thus, this is the era of Jesus' return, and if it is the time of Revelation's fulfillment, we must know Revelation to even know God's promises and keep His commands. In addition, since Revelation contains the will and purpose of God, we must know these things for us to say we have perceived the way of maturity. Then what is God's will and purpose promised in the book of Revelation? These are the promises made after the time of Moses, after the physical Israelites made a covenant with God, saying they would never serve foreign gods, promised after they betrayed and served Gentile gods. In 1 Kings chapter 11, at the time of King Solomon. These promises that were made started at the time of the Old Testament, but is completed at the time of the New Testament fulfillment. The promises made by God began with the promises of the new thing in Jeremiah 31 verse 22. And to fulfill this promise, God also promised in the Old Testament that there would be two types of seeds planted and a new covenant that would be established. Then at the first coming, what Jesus fulfilled was for the fulfillment of the new thing. Just as recorded in the Word, He planted God's seed from the planting of the two types of seeds in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, and verses 37 to 39. Then Jesus said that at the end of age, there will be a harvest that occurs. Also in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to verse 20, a new covenant was established beforehand on what Jesus would fulfill at the time of second coming. And this new covenant is God's law, which is revelation. Jesus came just as recorded in the Old Testament and planted the seed at the first coming. And at the second coming, He returns to harvest those born of God's seed and returns to complete the new thing. That is, create the new heaven and new earth. Therefore, at the time of second coming, the harvest occurs, twelve are sealed, and the twelve tribes are created. This was promised from the Old Testament and this was a purpose to be fulfilled. Therefore, the pro purpose God wanted to accomplish at the time of Revelation's fulfillment was to do the work of harvest, seal, and create His new kingdom and new people, the new heaven and new earth, the twelve tribes. And the other was to capture and imprison the dragon, the devil, this is a fulfillment of what is written in the book of Revelation, and thus the mature, perfect teachings. In this way, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the devil is captured and imprisoned. If that's the case, who will rule then? It is God who will rule, correct? Then what was created for this to occur? It is His promised kingdom, His new kingdom and new people, the Twelve Tribes. God said that He will return, but where will He return? From the time of the Old Testament, just as God promised, God harvests those who have a seed, seed seals them, and creates His new kingdom, the Twelve Tribes, correct? And because the twelve tribes are His purpose, God, heaven, returns to that place and unites with them. And since God reigns, it is God's twelve tribes who is considered the place of perfection. Therefore, without belonging to the twelve tribes, no one can say that they are going to heaven or are in heaven. Isn't it this place where God's will and purpose is accomplished? 
searching and finding the twelve tribes and carrying out one's life of faith according to the word is considered carrying out a perfect life of faith. Therefore, at the time of Second Coming, the mature perfect teaching that is like solid food is a reality to the fulfillment of Revelation. Furthermore, at the time of Second Coming, the place of maturity is a place created according to the promises of Revelation, the place that have united with God in heaven, which is God's new kingdom and new people, the twelve tribes. According to Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, we are warned that if we add to or subtract from the book of Revelation, we will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and instead receive curses. How much of Revelation do all of you know by any chance? Do you know the will and purpose of God? We must know these things to say that we are the mature eating solid food. And if we do not know these things, we are carrying out an infant life of faith, which can in turn cause us to add to or subtract from Revelation. If that's the case, when can we start to understand the meaning of Revelation? We can start to understand when the prophecies of Revelation starts to fulfill. It is when Revelation fulfills and those prophecies appear as a reality, can we then start to understand its meaning. Regarding this, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 to 12, that we know in part and prophesy in part, and when perfection comes, the imperfect will disappear. It is at that time we will be able to see face to face. Thus, before the prophecies fulfill, we can only understand in part, and it only becomes elementary teachings where we can make estimated guesses. However, when the prophecies fulfill and the reality appears, it is a time we will finally be able to see face to face. In other words, it's a time when what was known in part can finally be fully known. It is knowing the reality that is considered knowing the mature, perfect teaching and thus the place of perfection. Then from whom can we learn about the reality of the fulfillment of Revelation, which is considered the perfect, mature teaching? Can anyone receive understanding to these things by just praying to God? It is when the prophecies of Revelation fulfill, we will be able to understand through the shepherd whom God has chosen and promised. At the time of Second Coming, it is so important for the believers to understand Revelation. Just as it's recorded in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, first God selects a shepherd, then shows that person the secrets to heaven, and when the prophecies fulfill, God has that person testify to what was seen and heard. Thus, we must learn the mature teachings from the shepherd who is promised after we have perceived what the elementary teachings versus the mature perfect teachings are. God shows His secrets only to the selected promised shepherd and has Him testify to what was seen. And we can see this more in detail in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, concerning the route in which Revelation is conveyed. Let's read Revelation 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave Him to show His servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending His angel to His servant John. Looking at the route in which Revelation is conveyed, there is a scroll sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God in Revelation 5, and it's written that there is no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth who could open those scrolls, who could open those seals. God gives us sealed scroll to Jesus, and Jesus opens up these seals one by one in Revelation chapter 6 and 8, eventually opening all seven seals. The sealed scroll completely opens after all seals are opened. 
Then Jesus gives this open scroll to an angel. And through this angel, in Revelation chapter 10, he gives it to a promised shepherd, spiritually known as a new John, who comes figuratively as Apostle John, who receives and eats this open scroll and testifies it to God's servants. Who they are are the 12 tribes in Revelation 7, that is 144,000 and the great multitude dressed in white. Then, at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, who must we learn from concerning the realities to the fulfillment of Revelation? Firstly, in the spiritual realm, it is God, who is the author of this book, who knows, and furthermore, Jesus, who received this book. In addition, who will know here on earth, in the physical realm? The book of Revelation is no longer in God's hands, no longer in Jesus' hands, and instead, we can see in Revelation chapter 10 that this book has entered into the stomach of the promised shepherd. Therefore, we must learn from the promised shepherd who received this open scroll. The promised shepherd has seen in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8, as seen in Revelation 22 verse 8, is the one who has seen and heard when Jesus started to fulfill all the events of Revelation, and as promised in Revelation 22 verse 16, he is a messenger of Jesus, who was sent to testify all the events of Revelation to the churches. Thus the churches who believe in Jesus must meet this promised shepherd in order to perceive the word. Have all of you met the shepherd? Why should you meet the shepherd? It is because it is only through the promised shepherd, figuratively the new John, who we can learn revelation from. This is how we can understand God's will and purpose, become a spiritual mature believer, and go to the place of perfection where God and heaven dwell. When the place of perfection appears, what must we do? Must we remain where the elementary teachings are? Or should we go to the place of perfection? Let's learn more through the next reference verse. Let's read from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. In verse 1, it is written to leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Then why must we leave elementary teachings? If we were to reflect these words upon the first coming, the Old Testament was fulfilled, but the promises of Revelation still remained. This is why it is saying that the life of faith and elementary teachings from the previous era must be thrown away. According to Matthew 7, verse 21, it says just because one says, Lord, Lord, does not mean they will all enter into the kingdom of heaven. Instead, those who do the will of the Father can enter the kingdom of heaven. If that's the case, if the place of perfection appears, shouldn't we examine it for ourselves and make sure to go to that place? Therefore, at the time of Jesus' second coming, the place of perfection is the place created according to Revelation. It is a place testifying to the reality of the fulfillment of Revelation. That is a place where the prophecies of Revelation fulfill, the place where the reality to the prophecies appear, the place where one can see face to face. 
The really important thing is to check whether the place we belong to is a place of elementary teachings or the place of perfection, correct? With what can we examine these things? At the time of Jesus' second coming, the difference between the place of elementary teachings and the place of perfection is whether that place knows the true meaning of revelation and its realities, or they do not. In order to examine this, I will give an example from the content of Revelation. In Revelation, there is the appearance of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that appears in Genesis chapter 2. These two types of trees can be considered the beginnings of the Bible. Have you seen, from the thousands of denominations in the world, a place that has testified about these trees according to the Bible? For those who already know about the reality to these two types of trees, I believe you have learned previously in Intermediate Lesson 17 from the instructor of Thaddeus tribe very well. Since I am explaining about these two types of trees briefly as an example to show the difference between elementary teachings and the mature teachings of perfection, if there is anyone who have not heard the explanation, please make sure to do so through Intermediate Lesson 17. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, there is a tree of life where the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down upon. Also, this tree of life produces 12 crops of fruit, and its leaves are for the healing of the nations. Would this be considered a real literal tree? Or is it a spiritual tree? Within 6,000 years of biblical history, there was not a single person who could explain the reality of the tree of life. If that's the case, wouldn't the place who knows the reality of this tree of life and can clearly testify about it be the place of perfection? Exactly, what is this tree of life? 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that He was a true vine in John chapter 15, verse 1. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, Jesus was a reality of the tree of life. And in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said that his disciples were the branches. Since Jesus was a tree of life, the disciples who were the branches were also the tree of life. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32, it is written that the birds will come and perch on that tree, and this was like the kingdom of heaven. This shows that the Holy Spirit of God, like a dove, was with Jesus and the twelve disciples. Therefore, the reality of the tree of life is God, the source of life, and the true shepherd and its organization where God dwells. Next, let's take a look at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In Daniel chapter 4, the king of Babylon was symbolized as a huge tree where all the beasts of the field found shelter under that tree and all the birds of the air lived in its branches. Then what kind of tree would the king of Babylon be? In Isaiah chapter 5, we see that God planted the choicest vine, but it produced wild grapes. God called this vine the people of Judah. Then isn't there a true vine and a wild vine? If the true vine is Jesus, the tree of life, then the wild vine is where the wild beasts find shelter. It is considered the Gentile king, who is also referred to as a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What are the birds who live in its branches? 
Yes, it is evil spirits. Thus, the reality of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is Satan, and the false pastor and its organization where Satan dwells. At the time of the second coming that's promised in Revelation, what is the reality of the tree of life? At the time of second coming, the reality of the tree of life is Jesus, who is a tree of life at the first coming, and the twelve disciples, as well as a promised shepherd, the new John, that is the one who overcomes, and Shincheonji, the twelve tribes who have united with them. Jesus, the tree of life, unites with the one who overcomes, as seen in Revelation 2 and 3, appoints him as his promised shepherd, and is one with him. Therefore, the one who overcomes also becomes a tree of life, and the twelve branches on the tree of life is new spiritual Israel, the twelve tribes seen in Revelation chapter 7. In Revelation chapter 22, the reality of the twelve crops of fruit produced every month on this tree of life are referring to the saints of the twelve tribes of Shinchenji who have been produced by being evangelized to by the revealed word. And the reality to the leaves on the tree of life that heals all nations are the saints of Shincheonji, the twelve tribes, who have become evangelists and who heal all nations with the revealed word of God, which all of you are seeing today. On the other hand, what is the reality of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil at the second coming? This refers to the prostitute of Babylon and her organization. In Revelation 17, a prostitute is riding on a beast with seven heads and ten horns, and the name written on her forehead is Babylon. Since this Babylon in Revelation 18 is Satan's kingdom, the home of demons that have made all nations fall with a maddening wine of adulteries. Thus, the organization of Babylon is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, like the king of Babylon in Daniel chapter 4. The tree of good and evil is a maddening wine of the prostitute of Babylon that makes all nations fall. It is also the venom of serpents and the poison of cobras, as seen in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 32 to 33. As this is Satan's wine, it is Satan's false doctrines, that is, commentaries. Just as we have learned so far, it is very difficult to understand the true meaning of the word or regarding the belonging of the two types of trees at the level of elementary teachings. However, those who are at the place of perfection have perceived concerning these things and can also distinguish them. Therefore, at the time of the Second Coming, the place of elementary teachings do not know the true meaning or the reality of the two types of trees, and the place of perfection at the Second Coming of Christ knows and testifies to the meaning and reality of the two types of trees, which is Shincheonji, Church of Jesus. The secret of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil that no one has known for 6,000 years, and this secret that no other religious organization in the world has known until now. We, the congregation at Shincheonji, even our children, do know. So how do people come to know about Shincheonji? How does everyone in Shincheonji know this? It's because they have learned from the promised shepherd. As such, the place of perfection at the time of Revelation's fulfillment is a location that testifies to the reality of the fulfillment to the book of Revelation. It is where the new John, the promised shepherd of the New Testament, is at, who has seen and heard the words of the entire book of Revelation from Jesus, and the place where they have learned and perceived Revelation and believe is Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, the Twelve Tribes. However, even though there is a place of perfection like this, it is said that there are people who go back to elementary teachings. Next, we will take a look at Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 8, to understand this better.
It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again, subjecting Him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives a blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. From verse 4, it is referring to those who have heard the word of revelation concerning the powers of the coming age, being testified to from the place of perfection, and have tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit, but have fallen away. To reflect upon the first coming, when the words regarding the powers of the coming age was recorded, it is referring to the coming world, that is, the time Jesus returns, the time of revelation fulfillment. Also, the powers of the coming age is referring to revelation being fulfilled. When revelation fulfills, the reality to what's recorded appears, and just like being able to see face to face, one can see and finally know the actual entities. What happens to those who still fall away? They will not even be able to repent, and like the first coming, it's like they're crucifying Christ all over again. Then in verses 7 and 8, it refers to those who keep the mature, perfect teachings versus those who do not. First, those who are blessed by the Lord are those who are like the land that produces a crop. They are like the good soil seen in Luke chapter 8, verse 15, and with good and kind hearts. They hear the word, they keep the word, and with perseverance, they produce a crop. On the other hand, there are those who produce, produce thorns and thistles and are in danger of being cursed and being burned. They are those who learn the fulfillment of Revelation and still betray. According to 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 to 22, and Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, as they are those who learn the mature, perfect teachings, and afterwards still throw away the sacred commands given to them, they are no better than dogs and pigs. The reason is because even though they learn the perfect teachings, they go back and return to elementary teachings. From these two types of people, what type of person do you want to become? Now that the time of Revelation's fulfillment, when Jesus returns, has come, let's throw away the ways of elementary teachings, learn the word of Revelation, the mature perfect teachings, and teach it after, shouldn't we? This is what God desires. And this is what it means to go toward the place of perfection. Finally, the conclusion of today's lecture. Those who are in elementary teachings must find the promised shepherd of the New Testament and learn the word of Revelation since they do not know it yet. Also, the place of perfection at the second coming of Christ is a place created according to the promises of Revelation. It is a place where they are harvested and sealed. It's God's new kingdom and new people, Shincheonji, the 12 tribes. It's this place God and heaven comes down to, to dwell upon, and as such, God's will and purpose fulfills. Thus, let's unite as one with Shinjongji, the place of perfection, carry out a life of faith according to the promises, and become a perfect believer. The title for the next lesson is Intermediate Lesson 24, God's Purpose, the Creation, the Recreation of Heaven and Earth. Since that instructor teaches way better than myself, please look forward to that lecture. Now, with the meaning of God and Jesus being one with us, let's shout, we are one.
We transcend beyond race, nation, and religion and have united as one under God and Jesus. We are one. Let us pray. Father God, who is the origin of all life, we truly thank you, Lord. You have granted us this precious time to receive your word at the seminar. And as a result, we have learned about your revealed word today concerning elementary teachings and the place of perfection at the time of Jesus' second coming. And for allowing us to perceive these things, we sincerely thank you. Father God, specifically remember all the people who have listened in on this precious seminar. Help them to hear the revealed word in its entirety, perceive all things, become a mature believer, and distinguish good and evil and become a believer who carries out a life of faith worthy to receive blessings from you, Lord. And at a time when revelation is being fulfilled today, we desire for you to quickly come and reign. Father God, when you come and unite with us, please help us to be with you and receive your precious blessings where we can receive heaven and eternal life as an inheritance to live eternally with you. And we pray that your unending grace will be bestowed upon us endlessly throughout even the remaining of the seminar series. We believe and pray all these things in Jesus' name, who is so full of love. Amen. Thank you for watching to the end. Shinchenji Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony is God's kingdom created on earth as it is done in heaven. Shincheonji is also God's new kingdom and people recreated according to the process written in Genesis 1. Let us not conform to the corrupt pattern of the previous generation, but take part together in the work of recreating heaven and earth and become the new creation reborn with God's seed and spirit, endeavoring to enter the Sabbath rest. As you've just seen in the video, our next seminar's title is God's Objective, The Recreation of Heaven and Earth. It will begin at the same hour it did today. So please do attend to clearly understand the objective of God who has been working for 6,000 years. Shincheonji Online Seminar Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter is being broadcast to the whole world in 24 different languages via Shincheonji's official YouTube channel. We're also hearing a lot of good news from many different denominations from all over the world that want to be one with Shincheonji. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and our teaching, please call the number you see on the screen now. We'll make sure to guide you kindly in detail. We'll conclude today's Shincheonji Online Seminar by offering up the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us today.